With Alex Grinch out, we're going to discuss what's next for USC football. UCLA is mum about if any of their quarterbacks are still alive. And James Harden's gambit with the Clippers begins in earnest tonight. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is November 6, 2023. Yes, it is super early in Salt Lake. I'll be heading to the airport in a minute. Have you finished doing all those cartwheels of joy? All the jumping around that you did after USC finally purged itself of some really bad defensive work? I am. I'm ready to talk about it. If you like being in the know about LA sports, click the clack the like button. Click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that to let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Because it's always good when you're talking to LA. Even the people yesterday who were pretty mad at me over some of the things I said about Caleb Williams. So before we go through the news and notes and look at the scoreboard, look. Green Bay just flat out punked the Rams. 20-3. to three. The Rams have lost three in a row. Cooper Cup just straight up said it was crappy. The Rams are not dead yet, but I think that they can see the light. You might want to tell them not to go to it. Just saying. Meanwhile, Dennis Buonga scored on a penalty in the first half. LAFC held on to eliminate Vancouver 1-0 in MLS Cup playoffs. The black and gold will face the winner of the Dallas-Seattle series. There's one more game in that, winner take all. Meanwhile, today, surprisingly good schedule on a Monday. The Chargers are at New York to play the Jets at 515. Joshua Palmer was placed on injured reserve. He's out for four games. Jalen Guyton was activated in his stead. And oh, by the way, defensive lineman Otto Ogbonia is coming back for the Chargers. The Lakers are in Miami at 430. Terry and Prince is scheduled to return. The Clippers are at New York at 430. James Harden is expected to play in his Clippers debut. Terrence Mann is out. USC, 21st ranked USC, basketball. They're playing Kansas State at seven o'clock tonight. It's out in Las Vegas. Bronny James is out for the game. And St. Francis is gonna be at UCLA at 8.30. But let's get to what we were all just overjoyed about yesterday. Let's keep the happiness going. The firing of USC defensive coordinator, Alex Grinch, led to a litany of intriguing questions about the future of Trojans football. And I might add, some of those questions came from this audience, and that's why I can't wait to address it with you. But before we go through some of those other questions, I want to get one thing settled, one thing that was definitely asked. No, Lincoln Riley is not going to join Grinch on the unemployment line. He's not going anywhere. They signed him to a 10 million dollar a year contract. That is a hell of a buyout, right? You just can't kick somebody out and not expect to, to cut them a big, big fat check. $10 million a year? No, they're not doing it. But in addition to that, it's not like Riley can quit either. He has lost a lot of cred because he kept Alex Grinch. He has zero pull for an NFL job. It's not happening. And besides, if you're really honest with yourself, the Trojans are absolutely brilliant on offense. Just fix the defense. Why mess with something that works on the offensive side of, of the ball? Now in the interim for the defense, we talked about this yesterday in a breaking news clip that I put on the Trojans playlist. Defensive line coach Sean Nua and inside linebacker coach Brian Odom will serve as co-defensive coordinators. But then you're sitting there going, okay, who's actually in charge? Who's calling the plays on Saturday? And for that, I don't really have a clear answer for you. Nua has a terrific reputation in coaching circles. He, the scuttlebutt was he might have come back to BYU, where he went to school, to be their defensive coordinator. He has zero play calling experience. Now you might say, okay, well, Odom does. Yeah, but that was at Oklahoma and at Washington State where he worked under Alex Grinch. 
So who do you want? Pick your poison. Neither of them sound all that delightful to me at this juncture. So if I were to guess, because I'm not going to be able to tell you who's going to call the plays, but if I were to guess, I would expect there to be changes, not drastic changes, for the final two games of the Trojans' regular season. I expect the play calling to be extremely simplified. The speed D that Alex Grinch championed, the 3-3-5, I think it was too complex for a lot of USC's players. I really do. Because they were constantly out of position. If you saw that, they were slanting one way, the offense of the other team would go the other way. There were big gaping holes. Why? Because nobody knew where the hell they were supposed to be. That's a problem of communication, which is one of the reasons why Grinch got ran. So if the communication is bad, isn't it possible that instead of saying, putting out $5 words, you just say, see guy, tackle guy. Make the communication simpler. Second thing I would expect is for transfers, defensive linemen, Keon Bars, Anthony Lucas, and Jack Sullivan, all to get a second look. Every last one of them. Here's why. If you remember last year's collapse with USC when they got punked by Utah and blasted out by Tulane in the Cotton Bowl, Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch said, you know what, we just didn't have the size up front. We have to become bigger. And so they went to the transfer portal and they got four big defensive linemen. It was Bars, Lucas, Sullivan, and Bear Alexander. All of them, all of them highly recruited three stars and up, right? But only Bear Alexander plays. The other three defensive linemen are sitting there pointing at each other like that Spider-Man meme. Are you playing? No. Are you? And there's only, you have to sit there and you have to wonder why the hell they weren't playing if, this, if the priority was size. If Nua, the defensive line coach, wanted them to play, and he was overruled by Alex Grinch. Well, now Nua has pull to get those three guys some playing time. Remember, for whatever reason, those three guys didn't get on the field. Alex Grinch chose a smaller defensive line, despite the fact that he said he wanted to go big. So that's on Grinch as well. Here's a question that you might not have considered, but one of our viewers did. What is next in terms of who plays quarterback for USC? Now, originally, you might think, wait a second, that's the offense. What the hell does the defense have to do with that? Here's how. Think about it. Caleb Williams said he might stay at USC because he makes good money with the Trojans if he doesn't get where he thinks he's going to get drafted by a team he wants to play for. What if Williams is like, I can't go out like this because my reputation sucks because we keep losing games under Alex Grinch? What if the USC Trojans hire a good defensive coordinator and Williams is sitting there going, wait a minute, do I really, my draft stock has dropped in the last few weeks with all these losses. Before I was a surefire number one. Now I don't know where the hell I'm gonna be. How do I become a surefire number one again? stay one more year with USC and rebuild my reputation, not only with an elite offense, but with a good defense as well. Is that a possibility? That Caleb Williams thinks he needs to rehabilitate his own, his own draft stock after the last few weeks. Finally, who comes next in terms of the real full-time defensive coordinator? It's all speculation. Every single name that every scribe is throwing at you right now, they have zero insight. These right now are wild guesses, okay? But I can't tell you, so I can't predict who it's going to be, but I can tell you the type of person that it should be. It's got to be somebody who likes to recruit. Absolutely. Why? Because Alex Grinch did recruit those four people, for example, and he's only playing one of them. He's got to recruit people that are actually going to get on the field. And by the way, if you look at the scheme 
that Alex Grinch used, the Speed D, how different is it, say, from Clancy Pendergrass, who coached USC's defense for a long time? Or for that matter, how much different is it from Todd Orlando, the last defensive coordinator under Clay Helton? Pendergrass just wanted to X and O. He didn't want to recruit. So my point is this. You need to match the players with the X's and the O's. You need somebody who's going to do both. Otherwise, we're going to be in the same mess all over again. And one final question. When is USC's defense back? I've said this repeatedly. When there's a linebacker good enough to wear 55. That's when you know USC is really back. Been saying it for years. Now, it's not all bad news for the Trojans. Uh, they did get a commitment for the class of 2026. Sierra Canyon defensive back Madden Reardon, which is very ironic. You get a defensive commitment on the day you fire your defensive coordinator. Life is funny. Chip Kelly did not offer any specifics as to the injuries to both UCLA quarterbacks Ethan Garbers and Dante Moore during that these injuries happened during the Arizona game on Saturday. Now the Bruins do practice today and the scribes will be there, which means they're going to notice if any of these quarterbacks, you know, can suit up, maybe throw a ball. We'll probably know a little bit more then. Remember, right now, Colin Schley, the transfer from Kent State, he finished the game and, by the way, was 0 for 5 passing. So that's a, that's, a, that's a little troubling. By the way, both USC and UCLA have fallen out of the top 25 with their respective losses last weekend. James Harden said he's going to debut tonight over in New York City. He's had four days to learn the Clippers system, but as he told us, he is the system, am I right? Coach Tyron Liu uh, did not reveal what the starting lineup would be, but since there's not going to be any Terrence Mann out there for the Clippers, you could easily imagine Harden being on the court with Kawhi Leonard, with Paul George, with Russell Westbrook and Avika Zubak. Harden said he felt like he's in good shape, but he doesn't expect to go for 40 minutes, by the way. Meanwhile, and this is also important, former NBA GM Ryan McDonough, he, he ran the Suns for about four or five years, said that because there was such a lack of interest of teams to trade for James Harden, it was literally the Clippers or nobody. If it doesn't work for James Harden this year, he could be out of the NBA completely. Straight up, quote, the majority of teams do not want him at any price, even a non-guaranteed contract where he'd have to earn it, unquote. That's what McDonough told Sirius XM NBA Radio. He also noted that Harden's introductory press conference, where he completely disrespected Philadelphia and also said that he doesn't need to be a part of a system because I am the system, Oh, McDonough said that throws a lot of bad switches with teams around the league. They did not want to hear that. No remorse for treating Philadelphia that way. That was the way it was described. USC basketball coach Andy Enfield tamped down expectations ahead of tonight's opener. Quote, we have a lot to prove. The preseason hype and ratings do not mean do not win games, unquote. He did say that he believes the talent level that the Trojans basketball team has is to be equal of the USC team that reached the Elite Eight three years ago. By the way, uh, Kansas State did reach the Elite Eight last year. They're just not ranked right now. The Dodgers continue house cleaning. They declined to pick up the contract options on relief pitchers Daniel Hudson and Joe Kelly. Somebody they did decide to keep, though, for 2024 is relief pitcher Blake Trinan. He missed all of 2023 because he had surgery to repair both his rotator cuff and his labrum in his shoulder. It's been over a year since he's pitched. 
Finally, if you are a Bruins fan, say a prayer for the family of former women's basketball assistant coach Tasla uh, Butts, who passed away after a battle with breast cancer. She was 41 years old. But you let me know what you think of the comments thread. We're obviously talking a lot about Alex Grinch. You let me know your two cents. Talk to me if you think UCLA can actually win with Colin Schley. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a key on Corte El Queso production. Take care.